Welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Thursday. Hope you're having a great day. It's Valentine's Day, remember? So uh, if you're watching this, you haven't yet to get something for the missus or the mister, whatever, make sure you do that. That's your friendly warning of the day. Hey, we're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. And if you're investing this year and you're not getting the help that you want, you're working with an advisor, but he doesn't call you, he doesn't talk to you, he doesn't respond to your emails or she, uh, give us a shot here at Jazz Wealth. If you transfer your account uh, in the month of February, we'll just credit back whatever they charge you to transfer your account if those sneaky little suckers decide to charge you. Anyways, this is our financial, uh, well, our stock market update show. We call it the closing beat just to have some fun, go very quickly through the good, the bad, and the ugly with the stock markets today. A lot of information is above, off to your right and down below. Uh, let's get started here. This Saturday, by the way, I'm doing an open house here at Jazz Wealth. Uh, there'll be people in the audience. We're going to do a live dough show at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, I think it's an event on our channel, so you can go ahead and set an alert or whatever you'd like to do if you want to participate or come by the office and be here uh, in, in person. So uh, that's that. That's all I have for you there. The markets today, a little bit mixed, all right? So uh, if you look at the Dow, down 103 points. Coke is going to be one of the driving factors for the Dow not being able to go positive today. Close, very, very close, actually. Uh, but wasn't able to go positive. Um, you also had retail uh, sales numbers. We're going to go through those for you as well. The S&P 500 lost seven points on the day. The Nasdaq did finish positive by six points. A um, little bit of news out there. Trump's going to sign the spending bill, so the government will not, well, as of now, the government won't shut down tomorrow night, um, but he's also going to declare the uh, national emergency to go ahead and build the wall. So I guess he got a little bit of funding in the, the bill, but he's going to go get the rest of it in the form of a national emergency. So that hit the headlines late in the day. Uh, Amazon not going to build their headquarters in uh, New York. I wonder if that has something to do with the National Enquirer and all the politics behind that. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that came out in the news. And then retail sales numbers were in the news today. I want to cover just something real quick here before we get into the indices. Uh, retail sales, worst decline month over month since uh, 2009. It's actually the fifth worst decline since 2001. Um, and if you break down the different categories, it was really a bad number. So retail sales in sporting goods down 5%. Retail sales in online, sa uh, you know, on online sales of companies that have existing storefronts uh, down 4%, health and personal care down 2%, furniture down 1.5%, uh, general merchandise down uh, basically 1%. Clothing down uh, three quarters of a percent. Bars and restaurants down three quarters of a percent. I don't know how that is. Food and beverage only down a half a percent. Electronics down 0.1 percent. So very, very weak. In fact, if you back out um, cars and gas stations, uh, you have a loss, uh, a decline of 1.44 percent. Um, not good. So the market started depressed because of that here today, but showed some strength. If you look at the chart off to your right, you can see how everything started weak on the day. That's a five minute chart there. Uh, nope, it's over there. Uh, and then we basically came back to flat line, which is typical February. We did a class for this for our customers to kind of illustrate typical February performance. Uh, so there definitely was that uh, sort of action today. We did get the sell off into the close. Remember, we sort of been seeing that a little bit lately. So I don't know if that's a little hint of things to come, but we'll take a look. Here's the S&P 500 on the screen there for you. What we have is uh, no man's land. We are in one of the slowest months of the year and we are stuck in an area of indecision. So from a technical perspective, you look at these traders, these algorithms, the computers that trade, they have no real reason to buy or sell. Now the bias tends to be to the downside because there is this overhead uh, resistance, right? Uh, so if we saw a pullback in here, a lot of people think it wouldn't be too big of a pullback, but it also wouldn't be all that exciting either. So because of that, nobody can make up their minds to decide what it is that they want to do. Uh, with the NASDAQ being higher today, that was certainly helpful, but it's also stuck at resistance and overbought here in the short term. A lot of people think that's going to pull back as well. And the Dow, unable to get anything accomplished today. It's actually one of the better, uh, stronger looking ones out there being through the red line there, which is the 200 day moving average. And then uh, the Russell 2000, that was actually positive on the day as well with the NASDAQ. Um, that one looks pretty good. However, in the short term, be very healthy for that sucker to pull back. I don't think anybody would complain there. So those are the major indices for the day. Uh, let's move on to the sectors. Uh, financials lost about one and a quarter percent today. Um, it's just been trading in this wide sloppy range. Every blip you see on the screen represents one day. I probably should switch to line charts. Maybe that would look a little more interesting there. Um, but basically since hitting this low back around Christmas, we've made this nice little rally, but nothing. We have days where you go, yeah, here we go. We're going to get something done. And then you have days like today where you say, uh oh, looks a little bit weak. 
it's in a range, right? So that's the tricky part about a trading range. It makes it very difficult for short-term traders. As investors, you look at this and say, I have no reason to buy more or I have no reason to sell. If we pull back, you might be interested in buying more. If we were to take off higher, you would cheer and be excited. But for now, you've got nothing really to grab onto. So the sector just remains here near highs. Had a bit of a down day today. It was one of the worst performers, but uh, not really a big deal. There's, there's just nothing that's sort of headline news about it. Um, consumer staples. Uh, so that one fell about 1% on the day today. Uh, that's largely due to Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola held back the Dow. It held back the consumer staples uh, category. Uh, we'll co cover Coke in a minute with their earnings. But if you look at the, the sector, and in particular, I'm using the XLP as the symbol that we're looking at now, um, Coke makes up 11.5%. It's a big chunk of the consumer staples sector as far as the ETF goes. And so when Coke has a bad day, so is this sector in general. So this really stood no chance to have a positive move today. Now Pepsi comes up tomorrow, so we'll see if maybe competition shifted to Pepsi. We'll see. Uh, so we'll cover that for you as well. Individual sectors, I mean, you would have thought retail would have done a little worse today. It did the same thing it did yesterday, just a slightly different picture. This goes to the candlesticks classes, by the way, on the dojo. If you're one of our customers, go take a look. There's three classes that cover candlesticks. The, you would know that yesterday and today are essentially the same story. They look different on the chart, but they're telling you the same story, which is weakness is bought, even the slightest bit of weakness. I would have sort of predicted uh, retail to be lower on the day thanks to those retail sales numbers, um, but uh, we'll see. There's a lot of, without getting into like all the geeky stuff, there's a lot of sort of uh, uh, headlines about the accuracy of those numbers because the government shut down and how they went about getting them and everything. So it's kind of like an asterisk, like yeah, it was a bad number, not very good, but asterisk, right? Uh, so we'll see. Meanwhile, everybody that wants to stay positive is looking at uh, job growth, at the number of jobs added, even the smallest little uptick in jobless claims, not really a big deal. Um, so the real question is now, how many jobs does the economy add? We, we can't add 300,000 jobs like we just did in the last reading. So when that ticks down, we're all expecting it to by how much? Uh, we'll cover it when it gets there, I guess. All right, here's Coca-Cola on the screen. Uh, KO is the symbol if you're brand new to this. Um, worst day in uh, now over 10 years. It started the day as uh, having the worst day within 10 years. Uh, worst day in over 10 years, actually. Um, they reported earnings better than expected. Revenue better than expected. A lot of good things as far as organic growth and uh, organic revenue growth, uh, but Forex, foreign exchange and international interest uh, was a concern, not to mention the CEO said headwinds like 50,000 times. You know there are computers that read the statements from these um, uh, uh, earnings reports. There's also computers that read uh, Fed announcements. I actually have a software program that, that we pay for where it reads the Fed announcements and then it highlights every time they say certain key words and adds and subtracts the difference between them to sort of define the, the uh, maybe changes in their uh, overall sentiment. Well, anyways, the CEO said uh, headwinds a million times. Negative uh, headwinds will always be attributed with a negative number, no matter how much you want to attribute to it. Uh, so the stock sold off 8.5% uh, on the day. I actually didn't look at Pepsi, but they come up tomorrow. Little weakness on that one. We'll see what their earnings has in store. But uh, bottom line, Coke erasing um, all of the year's gains all in one shot, right? I mean, granted, the year's just getting started, but that shows how quickly uh, things can change. So we'll see what Pepsi has to say tomorrow. Uh, Cisco broke out to highs. You can kind of see it there, was unable to stay up there, largely just the weakness uh, overall. Uh, beat earnings by a penny, uh, I believe. Revenue was better than expected. Uh, we covered uh, this one a little bit yesterday. Cybersecurity and infrastructure, those areas of their software doing really well. Uh, they raised their dividend to 35 cents. They only raised it a, a touch, uh, small. Uh, raise there on the dividend, and um, they're buying back $15 billion worth of uh, their shares, added to their $15 billion uh, there. So uh, we covered that yesterday, just talking about those things. Uh, Apple in the news today, they're not going to be able to start selling their older iPhones in Germany, provided that they have the Qualcomm chips inside of them. Remember, they haven't been able to sell over there because of this whole back and forth. Uh, sort of interesting if you see the different uh, legal issues Apple's going through at the moment. Um, anyways, the stock's a bit of an underperformer in general. And actually, Berkshire Hathaway came out with their 13F here just a little bit ago. Um, they actually trimmed some of their Apple positions. So I think he sold 2 million shares. I have it somewhere in my notes we'll cover here in just a moment. Uh, we said Amazon just a second ago uh, won't be building their headquarters in um, New York. 
Uh, so, you know, time to move on to new ideas, new places there. Uh, the stock was only down by 1%. I think investors sort of see that as a good thing. Uh, JP Morgan, basically, yeah, down a half a percent on the day. JP Morgan's actually going to have uh, JP Coin, right? So remember when Jamie Dimon, he's the uh, CEO of JP Morgan, really bashed uh, Bitcoin. He was bit bashing all the, you know, how it's a fraud, it's a scam, it's an, uh, uh, what do you call it, tulip mania sort of thing. Well, all the while he was developing JPM coin, which is 100% different, by the way. It's not like Bitcoin in any way. Um, if you look at, see what they're doing there, uh, the JPM coin is actually tied to a currency. So wherever you're at, it will be tied to your currency. For example, here, it'll be tied to the dollar. So that'll sort of uh, um, mute the fluctuations in the overall price of a JPM coin. Uh, they're gonna start by using it internally for their wholesale departments, where the international transfers can now take place like that, versus having to wait for wires and all the regulations and stuff. So I sort of like what he did here. <laughs> I think it's pretty clever. He bashed Bitcoin in general and then goes, hey, I got a better one. This is what we're working on. And the guy that's in charge of that at JP Morgan, I, I forget where I saw it or heard it or something uh, today. Uh, he said, this is just the beginning for what they're doing. So look for more of that uh, in regards to, you know, the JPM coin uh, coming out. Interestingly, Bitcoin didn't do anything really today. It was flat. I might have delayed data on that. It shows that it was perfectly flat. So don't hold me to that. All right, well, that's that one. Um, let me go back over here to the charts, take a look at CBS. Uh, CBS reporting after hours, missed on earnings, missed on revenue. Uh, content distribution comes up as something everybody's interested in here. They're um, direct to consumer subscribers, much higher than expected actually. And they look as though, ah, did they raise it? So this is what I get for looking at this right when it happens. About 2 million more, it looks like, direct-to-consumer subscribers than they expected. And their long-term vision, which was for 2020, let me see if I can find it real quick for you. They had a long-term vision. They've now upped that now by quite a bit. 25 million is their long-term subscriber, um, direct-to-consumer uh, subscriber projections. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Where's the stock trading? A little lower? It's trading about 40, uh, let's call it 48. So just a small downturn on that one uh, since they missed on earnings, missed on revenue there. All right, moving on. Uh, NVIDIA reported earnings as well after the close here. Uh, up, uh, beat on earnings, beat on revenue. Really good, actually. What a, a great little response there. Uh, the stock's trading at 165. So earnings really, really good. Uh, guidance great, everything good. Just looks good for uh, NVIDIA. Stock's gonna open higher tomorrow, provided that the conference call goes well. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about Berkshire Hathaway's 13F. I only got to look at it briefly. Uh, looks like they sold off positions. They sold entirely. They sold all of Oracle, so they're done with that. He owned like 40-something million shares of Oracle, by the way. So uh, Mr. Buffett deciding he was done with that. No performance there. Uh, they sold the 2 million shares in Apple, give or take. I, I don't, maybe 2.1, just looking at it. Um, and uh, they bought, he went shopping for GM. Oops. Looks like we got GM in there and JP Morgan. We'll go figure, they're working together uh, now. So uh, just sort of initial scan through it. I'll, I'll dig through it some more for you. Uh, but it looks like uh, reducing a little bit on Apple, which is still a ridiculous position. I mean, just a ton of shares there. Uh, bought uh, General Motors and JP Morgan. Okay, uh, Alphabet, which is symbol G-O-O-G-L. Uh, City, by the way, uh, all these analysts, they do their top picks list and they occasionally update them and things. Uh, the number one pick for City is actually Alphabet, this Google. Um, they, moved, they adjusted it. So Netflix is now number two. Facebook is now number three. Uh, they said that their list is based on um, profit margins and momentum, general momentum. So uh, that's what they're saying. They're saying the top pick for this year for them is City. So very interesting, if you care. AstraZeneca shares blasted off today, uh, almost 10%, uh, better than expected product sales, not too much there. If you missed yesterday, you got AIG. Uh, they lost more than expected. They were expected to lose 42 cents a share. They lost 62 or 63 cents a share, um, thanks to weaker results in the credit markets. They blame the whole thing basically on the credit markets. Uh, so shares lower on that one. Uh, MGM down a little bit here today. Earnings beat, revenue beat. Uh, dividend was up 13 cents, or dividend goes to 13 cents now um, from 12. So I don't know if that helps you. Uh, Pepsi reporting earnings tomorrow, and I, I think I covered it all, man. I feel like I covered a ton. 
So that is where we're at. Basically, yeah, I've covered it all. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you if I can. Um, there was a, a pot stock that can was it canopy? Canopy reported today, I believe. They haven't reported yet, I don't think. Uh, canopy, yeah, it's only, it's just barely moving around there. I'm not sure if they reported yet. I don't see much action there. Um, so that'll be interesting. Probably something we'll cover tomorrow there. Um, Kronos, yeah, Kronos up 2% today. Whew. Well, that's a tall order, man. Uh, <laughs> That's a lot to ask somebody to pay for that. You are really betting on, as Robert Hershevec and Shark Tank would say, you're betting on operational perfection uh, from some of these pot stocks to, to get your money's worth. Wow. Hey, uh, yeah, no wine and well tonight. It is uh, Valentine's Day. You got you to gotta go. Don't worry about me. <laughs> go do something. Uh, so we do have all the videos on the dojo, but no wine and wealth here tonight. We are going to be doing the live uh, dojo uh, Saturday at 7 p.m. if you want to join us. I'm going to talk about the market's returns. I'm going to sort of elaborate on um, stock market returns and understanding how they work, what should you expect and what not to expect there. Uh, so I have some fun with that. Mm, okay, looks like I nailed it. Another good one there. Hey, if I helped you in some way, hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you're thinking about working with an advisor and you're like, I don't have enough money, I can't work with an advisor. That's what we're doing differently here. We're saying we'll work with everybody. Let us help you grow to be big someday. We're playing the long game. We're not interested in uh, the short game here. So we'll be back uh, tomorrow, of course, to do this all over again. I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.